He hit the game tying three with four and a half seconds to play. He's going hard left. Left hand drive. Got past Banks. Got it in. 4.3 left. They're looking to the south. They want a timeout. They're going to let him play. Gene Baptiste with one. Heaves it for the win. Ah! So, like, to have that instantly drop was just, like, devastating. Like, all I could do was just fall out on the floor. Like, I couldn't believe. It felt like a bad dream, like, in real life. You know, like, couldn't believe something like that could happen. Didn't feel like they deserved it. Didn't feel like, didn't feel like it was real. You know, you can't always control if a shot like that goes in or not. And um, the only thing we could control was our response. And so, you know, as gut-riching as that night was, we met the next morning before we left Asheville. And the whole message was really, this is either going to be a stumbling block or this is going to be a stepping stone. And the choice is going to be ours. We always try to work as hard as we can in the off season, but that after that loss, we kind of had a chip on our shoulder. We had a reason why. You know, we have a reason why every year, but, you know, losing like that, it definitely hits from an emotional aspect. So I feel like that season, you know, we definitely uh, want to build off that and have a better response. Everything that we have worked for has been taken away from us. They were playing that shot on every news channel, every, on ESPN, over and over and over. But at the same time, you know, Coach Richie did a great job recentering us, especially the guys that were coming back and uh, making us realize that, you know, we had a chance to write the story and um, how incredible of a story it could be. But look at this. Hello! Forget about it! Coach Richie trying to say pull it out. That shot oh, doesn't fall, but hello! This. Bothwell has a career high 34. Mike Bothwell! Mike Bothwell for the win! Oh! They start off conference play. Kind of not bad, but not as good as we should have. Lost to Western and UNCG. Then we went on a nice little win streak. The key's top of the key. Wants to get it, goes to the corner. Slauson thought about a three. Now step back. Tough look underway. Oh! Slauson with a hand in his face. Williams. Oh, 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 oh. my goodness. Alec Williams. A no look. Pagese out to Foster on the offensive board. And that's how you finish it up. It's on for the Catamounts. The law. Go for finish. Are you kidding me? A sudden stumble against the Citadel brought an eight-game streak to a halt, placing the Paladins in tight contention with Sanford for first place in the conference. And those next two games against Mercer and ETSU were hard, extremely hard. And then we went to Sanford. We just put it all on the line. In that locker room at Sanford, we didn't have any service, um, so I couldn't get my song that I usually listen to. And then when I came out to do my pregame shooting that I do every game with Coach Grow, um, their pep band just be, so happened to be playing that song that I always listened to. So it was like, it felt like it was a sign that today, that day was gonna be a good day. Uh, Garrett Heen didn't play in the first matchup. Bothwell there to clean up the miss. They continue to play fast. And Jalen Slauson picking up his 48. All right, Bothwell, how about some more? are both on the court. Home folks wanted to travel. Bothwell wants to continue to be fed. Well, against the world, all 13 points for him. All 60. Last had the number one seed in the Southern Conference Tournament in 1991. Bothwell. He gets hot. This one could be over in a hurry. 73 to 58. On they go to the semifinals. Bothwell will shoot a three. And it goes. Seconds. Jackson heaves it. It doesn't go. Furman survives and will play on Championship Monday. Carter Witt hits the three. Witt. That's 
in and out. But Preston Vanderwall, the rebound, counter. The Geese attacking, drops it off for him, who flushes. The mantra all year has been unfinished business for Furman. The Geese drops it off, slaps him, throws it down. Austin, 20 points tonight. Foster, that could be the dagger. Furman pulls the sword from the stone. And the Paladins are dancing for the first time in 43 years. Cavaliers of Virginia out of the Atlantic Coast Conference, 25-7. and seven. They won a share of the ACC regular season title. They will meet the Paladins of Furman University. School record 27 wins on the year, 27 and 7 overall. First time since 1980. That's, a, the NCAA that's a tough matchup for Virginia. The Paladins are excellent and intelligent. Against the pressure, you're going to see is the most important thing here. Get it in cleanly, handle the initial trap that you're going to get, and then make free throws if you force them to foul. Well, the Cavaliers are playing with four guards, and the four guards out there, along with Cedric, are their best free throw shooters. Clark in a straight jacket. Oh, he didn't need to do that. He threw it away. He and Pagis. It's Beekman. Good if it goes. Furman is one. If I had full belief, full belief in the shot, I've been missing all night, but that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I want to be in those moments. I was born for those moments. Furman's historic season brought accolades and attention to the university, both on and off the court. Jalen Swanson earned Conference Player of the Year and became the first Furman Paladin to be selected in the NBA draft in four decades. He is currently in his rookie year with the Sacramento Kings. Mike Bothwell played for his hometown Cleveland Cavaliers summer league team and is now awaiting his official professional debut. Furman's monumental upset drew the eyes of not only the entire basketball community, but the country as a whole. Website traffic, including admissions pages, soared more than 400% after the game against Virginia. Coach Ritchie has reloaded his squad for the 23-24 season as they seek to bring another championship home to Greenville.